Welcome to JS Tube. Today we are going to see about one of the factors of uh, Roosevelt modeling, uh, support practice or P factor. As you know, support practice or P factor is one of the inputs for uh, soil estimation using Roosevelt modeling. So support practice factor indicates the rate of soil use according to the various land use land cover types on the, the uh, on the surface of the earth. So the various types of land use land cover can affect the or can uh, determine the rate of soil lose by uh, um, pre allowing or disallowing the rate of runoff. That rate of runoff run uh, affects or determines the soil lose estimation, or it is one of the factors for soil lose estimation. So uh, basically, the uh, p factor uh, value ranges from one to zero. One indicates uh, one indicates uh, ma ma no man-made erosion resistance activities on the study area, whereas zero indicates very good man-made erosion resistance. So there are uh, different types of uh, uh, conservation practices or erosion resistance that enables to decrease the rate of uh, erosion in a certain types of land or in certain types of area. As you know, result modeling basically models or estimates the erosion caused by rail and sheet erosion, rail and sheet erosion. So this is one of the factors. So as you, uh, as it is indicated in this table, uh, these different types of conservation activities uh, conducted on a certain area, for example, let's take contouring, strip cropping, or terracing. For this purpose, we are going to deal about only consider contouring. Uh, so we have uh, we have DM data, we have uh, study area uh, boundary. So if we have these two. Uh, data we can we can compute this um, indicator. Let's say if your case is a strip cropping, you you can use the allocated values for each slope category. Or if your study area is uh, covered by terracing or dominantly uh, uh, the terracing activity is dominant in your study area, you can use this value with the allocated or the classified slope so basically what what types of uh, data required for this is the aim data for generating slope and classifying the slope and the watershed the watershed or the steady area boundary and the software itself rgis so let's add uh, the required data first let me add the steady area my steady area uh, located in this folder data, steady area, so this is uh, my steady area and let me add the uh, DM data for generating slope and reclassifying it as well, JS data, DM20, DM. this is uh, DM uh, data of Ethiopia as a whole. So my study area is located here. So I have to uh, clip out or ex extract my study area from this team data. So uh, di directly go to our toolbox in the spatial analyst. When you expand the spatial analyst, there is uh, extraction, extraction by, extract by mask. Click this, extract by mask. The input raster, the input raster, uh, as it indicated, the input raster from which series will be extracted. So the largest area to be extracted or to be clipped is here, the aim Ethiopia, basically. If there are another uh, rasters, raster layers here, so we have to select uh, this in this uh, drop down menu carefully. Input raster or feature mask data. By what? 
biowat study area or biowat uh, boundary or biowat area of interest you would like to be uh, extract so it is my study area the the vector okay it is processing we have to wait it so extract by mask so we don't need this da Ethiopia, the largest data set we have to remove it because we have already extracted out my study area so it is zoom, let us uh, zoom to layer it in order to visualize it let me ha make hello my study area so this is the dm data of my study area the this data is required for generating slope and reclassifying slope based on the given uh, ranges so in order to generate a slope we have again go to spatial analysis tools uh, surface then uh, here is slope so uh, the input raster is the extracted dm uh, the output raster folder you want to see so i have to rename it as a slope in the default folder uh, location output measurement it is optional but uh, as you see uh, here as you, as you see here the slope in percent so i have to generate so it is percent leave leave uh, other parameters as it is so it is gonna generating uh, the slope Uh, as you can see here, the, the slope is generated in percent. So we have one, two, three, four, five, five classes for each soil, uh, soil conservation practices. So we need to go to directly reclass, then reclassify. Reclassify, what we are going to reclassify is the slope. The input raster must be slope. Then click on classify tab. Uh, number of classes. Uh, we have to make it five classes so zero out to seven seven out to thirteen eleven point six three based on uh, remember we have to reclassify it based on this eleven point three out to seventeen point six seventeen this seventeen Point six seventeen point six out to twenty six point eight. Then leave the last uh, number as it is. Okay, okay. As you can see, we have five. Uh, class uh, slope categories so based on this based on this in our case as uh, we uh, have uh, seen before uh, in, a, in our case we consider only contouring but if your if your uh, study area is dominantly practice slope cropping you have to use values and if your area is dominantly uh, practiced here i think you have to use, use this but mostly mostly uh, we are in, in researches on uh, in project studies mostly you have to pick out the dominant cover uh, practices but if your study area is uh, dominantly practice contouring contouring and strip grouping we have to use these uh, values and these values then finally um, multiply the two rasters the two rasters we have this uh, uh, slope classification and this contouring value then this is one raster and the other one is we have this slope classification and the slip cropping, va uh, cropping value uh, so finally we have to multiply these two these two values and we have the p factors the p factors but mostly i as i told you mostly we have used only one dominant uh, support practice types so in our case it is contouring
this country. So after uh, after reclassification, we have to we need to change into vectors the slope class values. So conversion tools from raster raster to polygon. In our case, it is polygon. So the input raster must be reclass slopes. The output raster uh, must be your folder where you you put your folder where you put. Let let me raster polygon poly. Let me say rename it. Then click. So it is changed to polygon. So let us see the attributes. The attributes of this raster. So this grid code indicates the slope classes. We have five classes as you can see here. We have five classes, so this grid code indicates uh, five. Five or one. Uh, so this uh, this amounts of uh, classes uh, are generated from the raster. So we need to dissolve based on the grid codes. Based on uh, dissolve, uh, dissolve the uh, the the same number of grid codes must be dissolved and finally generate the five classes only so we need to go to geoprocessing either geoprocessing or analyze tools we need to go to geoprocessing then dissolve input feature class the input feature class must be the raster polygon So you have to okay. Let me make it rename it as it dissolve. So dissolve fields are optional based on what fields you want to, or based on what fields you wish to dissolve this uh, polygon. So based on grid code, we need to dissolve based on grid code. Then okay. So let us check the the attributes. As you can see here, it, it dissolves based on grid code. So we have five categories. That means the uh, slope classification, the reclassification slope types. So uh, let us uh, click on the table options, then add field p factor. P factor. So the, the data type must be the data type must be double. Okay. Okay. So it is not editable. So we have to uh, make uh, go to start editing. Uh, go to editor then start editing. What you want to uh, edit the result means this uh, the raster polygon this. So we, you have to select the target. Uh, the target layers that you wish to uh, edit. In our case, we are going to edit dissolve. So this continue. So the first one is a slope category one. That means zero out to seven. Zero out to seven. In our case, uh, we have decided as countering. So zero point five five. Zero point zero. 0.55. The next category is uh, 7 out of 11.3. So 0 0.6. 0 0.6. The next category, uh, slope category 3, that means 11.3 11 out of 17.6. It is 0 0.8. And uh, seventeen point six out of twenty six point eight, it is zero point nine. And the last one greater than greater than twenty point six eight is one. So we need to go to again editor uh, stop edits stop edits. Do you want to save your edits? Yes. Then the p factor the p factor is this. So let us change again to uh, raster. That means to raster. This is polygon, so polygon to raster. Polygon to 
ራስተር ዘይ ኢንፑት ራስተር ማስት ቢ ሰቲዞሉዋ ዘዲዞሉቦ ላይ ኮንቲንስ ዘ ፒ ፋክተር ሶ ዘ ቫልዩ ፊልድ ማስት ቢ ፒ ፋክተር ዚስ ፒ ፋክተር ሌትስ ኪፒት አዚትስ ኦኬ ራስተር ፖሊጎን ቱ ራስተር ዲስ ፕሮሰሲንግ so our final raster layer is this one let us uncheck all other layers and check see uh, uh converted raster be factor right? so let us make some amendments or some changes on the symbology aspect on the symbology aspect so this is the final p factor uh, this is what we have all today if you like this video please like comment and uh, you can subscribe thank you for watching